Well, joining us now with his thoughts on this is a man dubbed the leader of the Anglophones in Quebec. He is Beryl Wiseman, the president of the Institute for Public Affairs of Montreal. And he joins us now live in Montreal. So, uh, Mr. Wiseman, I'd like to get your thoughts on the report. Do you think this is a last-ditch effort by separatists to try and drum up any support they can for their cause? Well, Snare, first of all, it's good to be with you. I don't know who dubbed me that, but there you go. <laughs> um, look, this is hardly a last-ditch effort. You know, uh, I'm reminded words are so important. And there is such care taken whenever any comparisons are drawn between uh, ethnocentric PQ policies and any policies of any other re regimes in history uh, that uh, everybody becomes self-censoring. And yet the Estates General, funded by all our tax dollars, by the way, um, can use a word like ethnocide. They knew exactly what they were using when they used the word ethnocide. I'm reminded of what the American commentator, the late American commentator, William Buckley, would have said uh, with words like this. He said it, it's, it's sort of the difference between soft core porn and hard core porn, a distinction with little difference. Except in this case, there's a lot of difference because this report is not only misleading in its use of language, it's immoral, and in its statement of fact, it's illegitimate. Uh, this is part of the general PQ strategy, and they said it right away when they were elected. They created a section called the, I hope I'm going to get this title right, uh, it's not a ministry, it's a section of uh, s democratic sovereign governance that a minister named Bernard de Ranville is responsible for. Now within that organization, within that sec subsection, their budget was just raised by $10 million just this last week. This is in a time of austerity. So their budget is now $88 million to study what? To produce a report of lies like this, the Estates General claims that, that Francophones are victims of ethnocide. Whatever imperfectibility there is in, in, in Canada's bilingual and bicultural policies, we have spent so much of our treasure and talent and time to be inclusive, however imperfect. And if there are still injustices, uh, they are by exception. While in Quebec, every PQ government has spent the talent and the treasure to do those injustices by rule. Well, I want to ask you, the report claims that Canadian economic policies, and it points out something like 92 Canadian policies that right. are apparently hurting Quebec, but I know others, many business leaders in Quebec, might argue that the PQ government's policies are the one that are actually hurting Quebec. So what do you think when you talk about well, debt, austerity, and then $88 million to study, as you said, what? Snail, let's go through the, just some of the points. This report claims that, uh, that, that Francophones are being prejudiced against by, by Canada because, for example, there are 27 new writings outside of Quebec, only three new writings in Quebec. What they fail to point out is proportionally, the popul it's, it's, by rep it's by representation, by population. 100,000 people per writing. It's done every 10 years by census. Uh, it, that's a lie. The report says that, uh, that Quebec is losing money because of the taxes we pay to Canada. Quebec is the only province of the revenue department and collects net $8 billion a year from Canada. The report says that Quebec is, is, uh, is being uh, uh, prejudiced against, is being compromised because it doesn't get, it doesn't get uh, ship contracts, contracts to build ships, uh, and that they go to to Nova Scotia and, and British Columbia, yes, they're on the seas. Uh, that's why they get them, yes. Quebec used to have a, an important shipbuilding industry in sorel Tracy, but it was a private company, uh, and the Samard family, the actually the in-laws of former Premier Robert Bourassa, who downscaled and closed it. Uh, there is a free market still in Quebec, much as to the chagrin of, of many people. This report claims that there is a threat of anglicization in Montreal because 8.3% of the school schools are English, that's down 35% just in the past 10 years. So you've pointed out some very logical explanations for the concerns that are... I'm pointing, out, the, I'm pointing out, excuse me for interrupting, let's call a spade a spade. If, if the Quebec government can sanction, and I say that uh, in, in the sure knowledge that this Estates General report did not go out without the approval of the appropriate minister. So if the Quebec government can sanction the use of a word like ethnocide, let us talk straight. These are lies. This government has, has put forward the most radical agenda for the destruction of the civil rights of one and a half million Canadians now. We're not talking about Quebec as a separate country. There are a million and a half Canadians here who by the Quebec Languages Office's own figures are 86% thoroughly bilingual, conversant in French, 90% conduct their business in French. 
yet their civil rights as Canadians, as guaranteed by Section 133 of our Constitution, yeah, you make are being very, violated every day. Make very good points there, and unfortunately we have to leave it there, but I want to thank you so much for joining us and offering Pleasure, your insight and pointing out the misleading information in this report. Thank you, Stan. That is the president of the Institute for Public Affairs of Montreal, Beryl Wiseman, joining us live in Montreal.